I'll introduce them to you in a wee minute. But I really cannot resist mentioning one fella in particular, Seamus McCormick. And he's still going strong. It's lovely to see you, Seamus. Still morning. Well, good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen, and many welcomes here tonight. And thank you so much indeed for coming out in such great numbers. The 12th of July is a good day for fighting. We're going to feature the the homecoming stroke the Battle of the Boyne in the Fairways Hotel in Dundalk. This is very generously uh, promoted by the Cullen Promotions. We have a, not an incredible, an incredible lineup for a small hall show. I've never seen the likes of it in my life. By the way, before we carry on, I'd like to welcome a lovely guy, one of the greatest and most scientific boxers ever seen, Paul Judy McCluskey. Paul McCluskey. <laughs> We have with us today some of the boxers couldn't make it because uh, Huge Fury, for example, he's boxing on Saturday night and he sent Mickey Woods, the matchmaker, a sincere apology that he just could not take the chance of coming across today. But he will be there for the Battle of the Boyne. We have with us the wee Aussie himself, four years in Australia, wonderful, wonderful career in the making for him. Already he's Australian and Asian champion. The headliner, Patrick Murphy. Patrick Murphy. <laughs> the chief supporting contest we have from Duty Country, as I call it, Dungiven, Eamon King O'Kane. <laughs> He's boxing one of the fittest, most progressive boxers in Ireland, certainly today. And it is going to be one hell of a scrap. Anthony Fitzgerald from Dublin. <laughs> and at the end here, there's a wee fella. He doesn't look much. He's very, he's very light on it. But he's also very fit. And I'll tell you something. I promise you, he's going to be world champion inside five years in this division. From Belfast, Jimmy Conlon. <laughs> I saw the guys who have a show today. It was, uh, it's, well, it's lovely, lovely to see them here. I'd like to hand you over to the promoter in chief. The where? You want me to call him twice? Okay. Young Stevie Collins there at the end. Once again, give him a big round of applause. Stevie Collins, the son of a living legend. I mean that. Great Stevie Collins. Okay, right away, I'm going to hand you over to uh, the promoter in chief here, young Owen Murphy from Cavalian Promotions. Give him a big round of applause, folks. Still, it's still good morning, it is, I think, yes. Um, I have a big lot to say. Um, most of you know me here. I'm Owen Murphy. I'm, I'm representing Colin Promotions here this morning. And, um, and this homecoming of Patrick Murphy is scheduled for the 12th of July in Dundalk. And um, I'd just like to thank you, thank you all for coming. And especially the boxers who have different parts of Ireland to get here this morning. And the press who has come along and, and, and stayed about and waited about probably a busy, busy schedule today. But, um, I have a big lot to say, just um, I'm glad to see Patrick home, um, he's a local lad, he's my, he's my own son, you know, and um, to, to, to fight um, in a show in the dock against um, Michael Kelly, and um, you know, that's what, what, we've been working on this while, so we have, um, you know, behind the scenes, myself and, and, and Sheriff McCormick, and I'm much bigger, Mickey Hughes, and I must thank Mickey, Mickey for that, he's, 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 he's good, good back to the table. You know, and there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes in boxing. You know, um, a lot of people don't see, and a lot of these wee shows, as I say, these wee um, home shows and stuff like that. You know, and um, between um, coaches and boxing and other sections, we're trying to get organised. And um, you know, we hope this, we hope this is a good show. It is a good build, and I know it's going to be a good show. And I hope it's the first of many to get boxing back in this area to a, a professional level. You know, um, that's, that's our intention, anyway, to put, put perhaps back in the mob in the, in the broader towns. You know, and um, this uh, homecoming, to say, is, is, a good, is a good start for it. And um, I think um, um, Patrick's fight, um, his opponent is off. 
I want to get that board last night from, from Mickey. Um, you know, when these things happen in boxing, you know, um, uh, you have to come over these hurdles uh, as you want to learn. But um, been a good um, match maker, Mickey had Mickey discussed with me um, when we were making this show. They always have a backup in, 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 in the line, you know, and, and, and I have to say he worked hard on that, you know, and he, he kept a backup, you know, and um, maybe that's what we call on. But I not say much more than that because, as I say, I didn't, um, I didn't make <coughs> the match. But um, I think Harry's going to maybe tell us why the fight is called off and maybe who we're fighting next. And um, that's all I have to say, and thank you for coming. Well, ladies and gentlemen, last Saturday morning, or early Saturday afternoon, I was talking to Mickey Kelly, along with joint promoter Mickey Hughes and Owen, and he says 1,000% I had been there. Again, I don't want to go into details, I don't want anything carried back that's not right. Even a boxing coach, he should be highly respected, and in his own way, the coach of Mickey is probably thinking that he's looking after the betterment of his boxer, the safety, safeguard of his boxer. But Mickey said that he was definitely on no matter what anybody said at the agreed fee that was agreed on over a month ago. And it's a load of crap that was in the Facebook and papers about certain fees being paid to Mickey Kelly. He was being very, very well paid for the fight. We wanted this. Because these are two boys, Kelly has been calling Murphy out. Could you switch that off for a wee second, please? Uh, Michael, as far as I'm concerned, is a proper gentleman. And in my eyes, he always will be. But I think he's being advised wrong. That's, that's all I can say about it. Now, we had a hint two or three weeks ago that this might happen. So Mickey Hughes put in place a substitute, just in case, and it's even a harder scrap for young Murphy, in my eyes. Okay, can I mention who it is? It's a fellow that fought last Saturday night, and he won very well over, you saw it on television, a young fellow called Peter McDonough. And we're going to great expense, seriously, to get him over here, paying him a big fee so as not to let down the show. No matter what happens, the, this is one show that is not going to be cancelled under any circumstances. There's too much at stake. Even if we come out, even owing a few quid, or euros, I beg your pardon, we are going to run this show. I take, for example, the cheap supporting contest. My goodness. Where are you going to get 10 rounds of boxing in prospect? As two of the hardest punching great fighters, young fighters, still learning the trade, they're the first to admit it, in Anthony Fitzgerald and Anthony Eamon O'Kane. I think that's going to be a fight to remember. Now, I'm going to hand you over to, I'm still intrigued by this refusal of Mickey Kelly. I just, sorry, I just can't understand it. Now, I've just heard actually from Mickey Hughes that very generously they are giving Mickey Kelly another 24 hours before they scrap the Kelly team and run with Peter McDonough. And I think that's very, very generous of Mickey Hughes and Owen Murphy. I'm very curious to hear what Patrick Murphy has to say about this and how he feels. Is it disrupting his training? He may have to change opponents, etc., etc. We travelled a few days ago. We travelled all the way, some thirteen thousand miles from Brisbane, I think. Yeah. So this week, is that right? Brisbane, yeah. So we place in uh, Australia, and uh, he's here today, and he's very, very up for this show on the 12th of July, the Battle of the Mind. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian and Asian champion at Walterweight, give it up for Patrick Murphy. Thanks very much. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. 
and um, to Key Holland Promotions for obviously putting on the show and giving me the opportunity to, to fight in front of all my family and friends. It's something that I've wanted to do since I turned pro two years ago and as I say I'm delighted to get the opportunity. Um, it's great to be home. It's great to be back in Uri and um, yeah, like um, I'm disappointed. Um, Mickey Kelly, we, we left the chair sitting there for him. I thought he still made a show. Um, he called me out. I just um, read an interview on Facebook last night how he wanted back into the winner's circle. And to be honest, he wasn't going to get back into the winner's circle fighting me. But 24 hours, I think I've travelled the whole way home from Australia and Michael Kelly can't travel down to Newry. I think um, it was going to be a great fight. He's talked about how he's training hard and he, he reckoned he was going to beat me and if, if that's the case, I was fighting Michael Kelly in his hometown of the dock. It might be my homecoming, but I was getting into his backyard and I, I'm putting an offer out to Michael Kelly. Like we said, he's 24 hours to come back down and fight me, put his money where his mouth is and I think it would make for a great show. Uh, I, I wasn't actually going to be coming back until the end of this month and um, I was talking to my, my father Owen and he encouraged me to come home a bit earlier and I, I'm really glad I did. It's been great getting back into the club with, with Seamus McCormick and um, back to basics. I've been training every day with, with young Connor Wallace who goes to, to Germany with the Irish Under-18 team now um, next week. And um, it's, it's just great to see all my family and friends and to be fighting on this show and especially topping the bill, having such such great boys on, on the undercard. But um, I'd like to ask the people of, of Newry and Morn and the people of, of South Armagh to come out and support small shows like this. Boxing is, has gone stale at the minute and we need people, we need these shows to be successful. And the only way we can get these shows to be successful is to get people through the door, get bums on seats. Like, it's, it's a great show, there's great fights on the night and we just hope that we, we get a good crowd there and we can continue and maybe run another one at the end of this year, the start of next year and maybe many more in, in the future. And then um, just um, on the, just back to the Michael Kelly case, like um, I, I'm going to fight Peter McDonough who Michael Kelly himself wouldn't fight. Peter McDonough is a harder fight and um, I'm going to fight him in the dock to prove to Michael Kelly what, what good a boxer I am and I'm going to put on a show in front of his people. So um, again I just want to I want to say that to Michael Kelly, if, if you see this or you hear word of this, please get in touch with Michael. I think we should get it on. Thanks very much. And I think really, even if Mickey does turn it down in the next 24 hours still, that's a, that's a fight that we should be putting on again in October. Maybe with under new trainership or something. I have no idea what happened. It seems so bloody strange. He was getting very, very well paid. Uh, a good show for later on in the year. Because now there is real, I don't want to say enmity between the two. Paddy Murphy is very hurt. And uh, believe it or not, Michael Kelly's hurt in a certain way as well because his trainer just wouldn't let him, didn't agree with him. Terms or whatever. Uh, the Contract is sitting on the table for Mickey Kelly to sign if he came today. It's going to be extended for another 24 hours. Now you can't be any more patient than that. We have a show. And the undercard in that show is sublime. It's definitely one of the best shows, possibly in the last five, six years, to be run in the category of small hall boxing. The Chief Supporting Contest, I'd like to hand you over to Paddy Murphy, he's going to introduce the Chief Support Contest here. Um, oh, I'm, I'm privileged to have um, to be top or oh, headline on the show with, with such a great supporting bout and uh, I know it's going to be a cracker, two, two great boxers and um, yeah, it's it's um it's going to be a great fight. I'll just uh, introduce you on my left here, Anthony Fitzgerald. He had, um he, his last fight he lost to Andy Lee, which a lot of people thought was a dubious decision. Andy Lee, who's in line maybe for a possible world title shot, so it shows shows how good he is and and how good this fight's going to be. Okay, 
I just want to thank the lads in Kukulu Promotions, Owen and Mickey, for having me on the show to basically revenge <coughs> the loss on my card. Where Eamon that I did think I won in prize fight, and a lot of people did think I won. But come now, 10 rounds, it's a different story. And fair play to Eamon for getting back into the ring with me and giving me the chance to revenge this. Like, not only does people not want to grin and have one shot at me, but he's getting in now and he's having another shot. Like three rounds now in for ten. So just want to thank Eamon and the lads for having me on the show. Um, now I'd just like to hand over to, to Eamon O'Kane. He's a, another great fighter. As um, Anthony has said, the two boys fought before. Eamon just nipping the decision and um, that's the three round fight. It's now a ten round fight and it's going to be ten great rounds. Eamon O'Kane. Good to be back boxing and show with Paddy. I boxed with him as an amateur many years ago when I was free on the way to Australia and across the Middlesbrough box. So uh, it's good to be back boxing with you again, Paddy. I'm grateful that the show's going again. It's, it's, boxing seems to be leaving here, so it's going to need small shows to keep boxers fighting and keep us living, you know. And um, no, it's good to be fight, fighting Anthony again. After all the talk that was done after it, I thought I would clearly won the fight and I had to fight back. You know, if there's, if there's any uh, quality, you know, punching or quality of the boxing at all, it came from me, and yes, it was wild and crazy because I was a prize fighter, but I clearly thought I won the fight well. But I will answer them questions on the 12th of July, the wonderful 12th of July, and uh, I intend to show the improvements that I've made with the new coach, Bernard Ocheka, who's doing a fantastic job with me and myself, Paul McCluskey. And uh, oh, looking forward to getting that Irish title around my waist and uh, get the first belt around my waist and moving onwards and upwards from there. Thanks again for everybody. Thanks for Hello, Eamon Graham, King Ken. Hello, So, this junction, actually, I'd like to welcome a fella. It's, it's, it's an absolute honour to have him. He has done more for professional boxing over this past 20, 30 years than possibly any, any other trainer or even promoter. In Ireland, Mr. John Breen. John Breen over there. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> the, the, the hardest man ever in boxing, the great Fra McCullough. <coughs> Fra McCullough is here. He's the chairman of the Boxing Union of Ireland, apparently. So, we head on here. There's a young fellow from Belfast, and I have admired him for many years. His brother got silver at the Olympic Games. He got silver at the European Games. That's young Michael Conlon. But we have with us today, definitely, the future champion of the world from Belfast, Jimmy Conlon. Thanks. It's a Privileged to be here on a great show. This is where I fought some needs. These small home shows keep us uh, going. Okay, and for sure, to be a, a cracking fit. I'm, I'm, as a boxing fan, I'm excited to watch it. And, uh, I was on a few amateur builds with Paddy myself. It's good to see him back. Glad he doesn't have that Aussie accent because I can't stand it. But, uh, <laughs> it's also good to be fighting on the 12th of July and getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> With Jamie's talent, he's very, very hard to get matched because we're starting to get throughout Europe that he is a potential world champion. But we promise he will be on the show and he will be boxing. I'd like to introduce you to a wee fella here. He comes from a wonderful family of amateur and professional boxing. His father beat all odds. I think it was my first thing as MC in a motor car for Barry Hearn way back in 1994, I think it was. Uh, he was pitted in against the then invincible Chris Eubank. But he came out, and he came out well. His name was Steve Collins. Ladies and gentlemen, his son is here, and he's taken up the sport of professional boxing, and he's doing very well in his uh, debut of fashion. He's coming in at cruiserweight, and it's hard to believe because I hit him a wee dig in the stomach there today, just so I usually do that to see if they're fit, and he never budged. 
I heard he's a real bull at training, just like a daddy. And to be successful in professional boxing in particular, whenever the chance arises, you become a bully. That is the most successful way. And his father was brilliant at that. And I hope the son is the same. Ladies and gentlemen, Stevie Collins Jr. Hey, Dan, I'd just like to say thanks, lads, for inviting me down. And um, I'm really looking forward to the show on the 12th of July. I hope it goes great. I hope it's very entertaining for everyone. And um, I hope we exceed everyone's expectations. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll not hold you back. That's about it. We'll finish up now. The 12th of July, the Fairways Hotel, we're depending on you, we're out an awful lot of money on this particular show. If we get a pack house, we'll be breaking even, just about. But this is going to be well worth it. It's a forerunner to what can happen. And there's a fellow there sitting, Larry O'Kane, Eamon O'Kane's daddy. They flew in especially from Spain, from Spain, to be here today. Larry O'Kane. And uh, this is a very, very important show. Even Cormac Campbell's even here today. You think, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to believe. Wonderful. Such legends. But I think we'll end up, we'll end up with a wee word from the top of the bill, Patrick Murphy. Again, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out today and um, everybody that's shown some support for the show and again I ask the people of Newry and Moan, South Armagh and of course the people of Ireland to support not only this show but other small hall shows around the country but hopefully we can pick boxing back up and I want to fight as many times in Ireland as I can and um, just yeah again thanks everybody for coming and I hope to see you all on the 12th of July. Thank you. Well done. Okay thank you very much. That's it. Interviews can take place and the photographs have already been taken. We started off a bit late and some of the photographers had to go elsewhere. But please, it's down to the media whether this is a success or not. We're trying very, very hard. Oh yes, yes, hold on a second. Very impatient. Catch us on to this. Want plenty of photographs in your local papers and plenty of write-ups as we work along. And look, contact Mickey Hughes his uh, phone numbers on the this sheet. Any questions you want answered, please do not hesitate to contact us through Mickey Hughes. Uh, once again, thanks very, very much indeed for coming. You've made a lot of effort, and it's great to see Newry's number one asset to amateur and professional boxing here tonight or this afternoon. Serena Wallace, lovely to see you. There's more, more to the boxing. Welcome to you. So once again, to Seamus McCormick, to everybody here, may God bless you all, and we'll see you eventually on the 12th of July, it's a good day for fighting, <laughs> the Battle of the Barn. Thank you very much indeed. Any questions you want, put them up to the boss here, Mr. Old Murphy, plus the boxers. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much for coming on this one, Brian, and the last folks. Any questions you want to ask any of the boxers, or thank you, Hughes, feel free to do so. Well, you just ask you in terms of the uh, opponents, I mean, how does that affect your preparations now for going to the fight if you, if you aren't too sure who you're fighting? Um, it doesn't affect me one bit. Um, I have a nine professional fights now, and it says six of them, six of the fights weren't from um, scheduled opponents. Like, um, the worst was I had a, a change of opponent within 12 hours of a fight. This has given us over four weeks. Um, the promoters had a plan B in place, if they've already lined up Peter McDonough. And it's just a matter now, if Michael Kelly doesn't come forward within the next 24 hours, it's Peter McDonough. Four weeks is a long time to, to train for anybody, so um, I'm 100% I'm fit, I'm going to be fit, and yeah, it doesn't matter who it is. You broke your hand last year. Um, did any recurrence to that problem, or are you able to hit it full back and train? Um, yeah, my, my hand's perfect now. Like, um, it had been sore for a, a right few months afterwards, and um, yeah, from, from now on, the, the odd time it gets a bit of a pain, a bit of stiffness, that's it. Like I'm, I'm punching as, as hard as it was, if not harder, because of all the strength and conditioning work we've been doing, so yeah, my hand's not an issue. It's obviously um, difficult, I suppose, to build a profile when you're away. 
to, to make sure everyone knows fucking Arlen knows and community you're helping to make a name for yourself here, or, or what's the plan in terms of the future for, for how much you'll you be able or how much you want to fight at home? Um, oh, like I've, I don't want to fight at home from, from a turn professional, and um, I've said I wouldn't make it difficult for any promoter to put me on. And um, it's, it's great to have the opportunity. I would love to fight in, in Ireland as, as often as possible. And um, like the media is a great thing, like Facebook and Irishboxing.com and, and Green Job and everybody's been very good. Like they've been the profiling me and they've been putting me out there to the Irish people. And um, I this this is my first show in Ireland and I wanna sort of put it out there. I wanted to, to put on a good show against Michael Kelly, but if it's Peter McDonough it doesn't matter. I wanna win a lot of supporters in this trip and hopefully next time I come back the fan base is gonna get bigger and bigger. Oh yeah, well um I'm uh, getting this fight out of the way first, but the boys are still 99.9% sure that it's going through and once we get final details of that, that's, that's another fight down the road, but all on, all on my mind at the minute is, is July 12th. Yeah, that's right, other two, yeah. Well done, Paddy, any more questions? Just to ask, uh, as far as Paul Tame and Anthony first, uh, for, for fighting again, obviously prize fighter. Probably the most admired fight of the night. That was it, that was in it. Like I mean, is this the fight that you already wanted? So you obviously had a few comments probably you picked out that you yeah, have had, had a bit of a domestic rivalry that you haven't got in the ring. It's a great matchup to finally get. Yeah, well, this is one of the fights that I've always wanted, like since prize fight, because three rounds. No one can do anything really in three rounds, and it was the best prize fight fight, so you say, since prize fight started. So over ten rounds now, it's a different ball game. So this is the one that I wanted now, and. You see how good he is then when he does come into 10 rounds. Do you expect it to be a much different fight? That the, the prize for fighter format changes the way a lot of that's. Well, it's obviously it's going to be a different fight. It's over 10 rounds. The prize fight was only over 3 rounds and it was basically a walk for 3 rounds because that's all we had. But we'll see that win the force, win the second round. Basically, you know. So 10 rounds now we can settle in and concentrate on the boxing. Ask Aon uh, how important is this fight for yourself, obviously, after the, the last time you fought? Um, no, it's good to well, it's good to get back and win a ways in February. Um, for me, it was a terrible performance. It was a, it was a change of coach and change of gym, and uh, I was only with the with the team five or six weeks. So um, definitely, we had as I would say, it was up my ass after the later fight, and especially in the circumstances that I took that fight, it was wrong. So um, I'm glad I'm, I'm uh, I've had a, a good period of time to work with Brad on the team. Um, I'm definitely I'm very happy with the way I'm watching and as far as a 10 or 3 round fight, to me it makes no difference. You know, I tend to have won every round to get a little prize fighter and uh, that's exactly the way the fight's going to go. <coughs> well said, Evan. Any more questions? Um, for Jim. Peter? Or, uh, you sort of, well, people expected things to move along a lot quicker for you as a professional. Why are things been so slow, I guess, and do you get frustrated with that? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, I'm, I'm in the gym every day like everyone else and I'm working like everyone else, but it just doesn't seem to happen with the fates and seem to fall through from, from myself more than others. But uh, especially with the lower weights, it was hard to uh, get, get matched. And uh, it gets frustrating now, but what Johnny told me at the very start, it was going to happen, it could happen, and it, it I didn't, I didn't believe him, but it did happen, and um, he keeps me focused, and him and Eamon are they're beating me up every day more than anyone else can beat me up, and, and my brother is also beating me up every day, so it's it's uh, it's just it's just down to keeping your mental focus when you're training, knowing that your performance on the night is all that matters, and it doesn't matter who you're fighting, and if, it, if the fight happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, but you have to keep focused, you know, so that's so. all. You're, uh, you're a name check there, but you've had a butler recently, is that a fight you'd like? So oh, I love that. Oh, it's, a, it's a great fight, and I think he's a good fighter, he's a really good fighter. He's, a, he's caught me out a few times, and uh, it's a fight I think it'll be exciting, you know. I think I hit too hard for him, and he looks flashy, he looks like he hits a bit hard himself, so it, could, it wouldn't last the distance, but uh, flyweight, super flyweight. If I, I can move back down to uh, the flyweight and, and fake Cam Satchel tomorrow, you know. It, it, It'd be an off fighter, love. I've seen him against Luke Wilton and I wasn't impressed. And uh, He's made for me, to be honest. I feel too big for the fly, uh, for the fly bits and super flats and, uh, and hitting too hard for him. And, uh, 
it's either the fates I want. Um, the fate that in the 12th of July is, is a must win. If I lose, it, I'm going back to zero. So every fate from now on is a must win because I want them guys and uh, I want to be upper, I want to be the British and come up champion, I want to be European, I want to move on, I want to be border dog, whatever. But uh, this is what I want. Talk to, to John or to give out opponents or how points you want? No, I, I don't really talk about opponents because uh, I don't focus on opponents, I focus on myself and if I perform it's all that matters. Yeah. The opponent is he's got two arms, he's got two legs, if he has a third arm I'm, that's when he gets scared. But that's all that matters to me. What I do in the ring is is, is what all that matters. Okay. For why would you, I mean, you came from a rugby background, I think, was it? Why would you decide to take up the family business? Um, in the off season of rugby, I used to go to my uncle's gym uh, just just to keep fit. And, uh, so in the off season ended of this year, uh, I was doing some sparring, you know, I was getting in with a uh, season pros like uh, in Jones, <coughs> and other lads, and he said to me, you know, I think I think you have talent here, I think we should give this a shot. I, you know, I just said, why not? Will you keep doing both sports? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep doing both sports and I'll see how to go upon it. Are you, are you still trying with Pascal now? Or? Yeah, I train, I train with Pascal every day in uh, Celtic Water Gym in Cordova. And how do you find the, like, I mean, some of the game teams, the very experienced lad, how do you sparring with them? Yes, great sparring. Great sparring, it's going well. Again, with lads like Steve Reynolds as well, so they all hit hard. <laughs> so we'll find it okay. Nice, nice level to be starting now, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very lucky to get to the standard of these two lads, but, you know, every day I don't mind. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Shane. There's one lad here, uh, incidentally, folks, and I really want to show him respect. Uh, Stephen Sharp from Green Job. He travels all over Ireland and sometimes all over the world to press conferences. He's another great asset to the wonderful world of different types of boxing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. God bless you all. We'll see you all on the 12th of July for the Battle of the Boyne at the Fairway Hotel Dundalk. Doors open at 6 o'clock. Boxing starts sharp at 7. What a night we're in for. Thank you very, very much indeed. <laughs>